हेलो एवरी वन मई नेम इज मिनी से ठी आई होप यू ऑल आर स्टेइंग हेल्दी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट रियल बिजनेस साइकिल थियोरी दिस थियोरी मोस्टली एसोसिएटेड विद इकोनमिस्ट लाइक फिन ई किडलैंड एंड एडवर्ड सी प्रेस्कॉट अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस थियोरी बिजनेस साइकिल्स आर रिजल्ट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजिकल चेंजेस एंड अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ रिसोर्सिस According to this theory, business cycles are result of a change in technology and availability of resources. As we know, our technology and resources influence our production and aggregate supply. Ultimately, it will lead to business cycles, or we can say that ultimately it create fluctuation in economy. In this equation, you can see y t equal to a t function of k t and l t. here yt is our output or we can say the production in t period at is technology in t period kt is capital in t period lt is labor in t period as we know labor and capital are our resources so according to this equation our available resources and technology will influence our production and eventually it will lead to business cycles now with the help of this diagram we will see effect of positive technology shocks on production in this diagram on x axis we have labor and y axis we have output and these are our production curve our initial equilibrium point is b at this point our labor is o l and output is o y now suppose our technology improve because of technological improvement our production curve shift to forward now our equilibrium point is a at this a point you can see our production increase from o y to o y 1 here you can see we are using same amount of labor but because of technological improvement our production increase from oy to oy1 so this will be called positive effect of technology we are using same amount of labor but still our output increase from oy to oy1 now labor demand will increase in economy but why labor demand will increase in economy it has two reasons first reason is that we are increasing production obviously we need labor second reason is that during this movement we are increasing output by using less labor that's why marginal productivity of labor is very high obviously when marginal productivity is high we will increase demand for labor so we will increase demand for labor from ol to ol1 as labor demand increase production will also increase from oy to oy2 so here we see because of technological change our production increase as production increase that means income of entrepreneur increase profit of entrepreneur increase plus because of technological change labor demand also increase if labor demand increase that mean income of labor will increase so we can say that at this moment because of technology our economy is moving towards expansion phase of business cycle now with the help of this diagram we will clearly understand effect of technology on investment and income in this diagram on x axis we have periods period 1 2 3 4 and 5 y axis we have technology income and investment a is technology i is investment y is income initially our technology is a b a a and investment is i i and the income is y y now suppose at period 1 our technology improve a b after that it become constant as our technology improve in period 1 our investment also increase i d but after certain time period you can see our investment is reducing and finally it become constant as our technology improve at period 1 a b our income also increase y f but after certain time period our income is increasing but at diminishing rate you can see at period 1 when technology improve our income increase y f but after certain time period our income is continuous increasing but at diminishing rate you can see initially increase yf after that this one this one this one this one gap of uh, this gap is reducing so we can say that at technology improve initially our income increase at increasing rate but after that income is increasing but at diminishing rate so we can say that because of technology our investment increase and slowly slowly decrease but income continuous increase at diminishing rate so we can say that because of technological improvement initially our income investment both increase as a result in economy employment increase wages increase consumer spending increase and eventually we move to expansion phase of business cycle but slowly slowly we move towards a recession phase of business cycle 
Now with the help of this diagram, we will understand effect of technology shocks on labor market. As we know, when technology improve, marginal productivity of labor become high because now we are producing more output with less number of labor. As a result, employment and real wage rate also increase and our economy move towards expansion phase. On the other hand, when technology is unfavorable, then marginal productivity of labor is very low because we are using more labor but producing less amount of output. As a result, employment will fall in economy. Why should we hire employees if already we have more employees? So, real wage rate also fall. As a result, economy will move towards recession phase of business cycle. In this diagram, you can see on x-axis we have labor and y-axis we have real wage rate. LD is labor demand curve, LS and LS1 are labor supply curve. Initially, when our technology improve, our equilibrium point is E. At this point, you can see we are using less number of labor. We are using OL amount of labor but producing more output. That's why real wage rate also high OW and our equilibrium point is E. Now, suppose our technology become unfavorable. As a result, our labor increase OL2, OL2 because now we are using more labor but producing less amount of output. Our equilibrium point is E1 and our real wage rate fall from OW to OW2. Now, we will see effect of technology on real aggregate demand and real aggregate supply and on interest rate. As we know, when technology improve, aggregate demand increase in economy. Obviously, people increase demand for mobile, laptop, computer as technology improve. When aggregate demand increase, obviously, demand for investment for also increase for these goods. As demand for investment increase, interest rate also increase in economy. So, in this diagram, we will see when aggregate demand increase more than aggregate supply. Initially, our equilibrium point is E. AS and AS1 are aggregate supply curve, AD and AD1 are aggregate demand curve. Initially, when equilibrium point is E, interest rate is OR. Now, aggregate demand increase more than aggregate supply. You can see aggregate supply increase only this one, but aggregate demand increase this one. That means aggregate demand increase more than aggregate supply. As a result, interest rate increase from OR to OR1 and our new equilibrium point is E1. Now we will see when aggregate supply is more than aggregate demand. Sometime because of technological improvement, our aggregate supply increase more than aggregate demand. Obviously, now our technology has improved. We can produce more amount of output with less amount of input. So, we will increase our production. As a result, aggregate supply will increase. But when aggregate supply is continuous increase, obviously, our demand for investment will fall. Why should we invest more if already we have so much production? If demand for investment falls, that means interest rate will fall in economy. So, with the help of this diagram, we will clearly understand when aggregate supply is more than aggregate demand. So, AS and AS1 are aggregate supply curve, AD and AD1 are aggregate demand curve. Initially, equilibrium point is E and initially interest rate is OR. But because of technology improvement, as our aggregate supply increase from AS to S1 and aggregate demand increase AD to AD1, you can see increase in supply is more than increase in demand. That's why our interest rate fall from OR to OR1 and our new equilibrium point is E1. So, this is all about uh, real business cycle theory. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.